Welcome back for another video. This is uh, video number two, lab six of our 2020 lab series. I uh, just want you to see here, I downloaded the evaluation of SQL Server 2019. Uh, you just Google it, like SQL Server 2019. And you just go to downloads. And you do on-prem. Once you do that, it comes up with the windows, you fill it out. And then before long, you're downloading. So I have this on my download folder. There's my SQL ISO. Close this because we have it now. And now we're going to put up, pull up our VMware again. So going to do now is we're going to install if I have a 2019 server I think I have it I think what I'm going to do is just see what I have set up for a domain controller you normally wouldn't do this on a domain controller um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the file servers for this because it just makes it easier so let's make sure we have enough resources so I have two gigs of RAM. <laughs> I'm going to shut these machines down and give them a little more RAM. So here, shut down guest. Now this is going to blow up the cluster we previously set up, but that's fine. Guest. We power down. I have some other servers set up here. I'm going to power them down as well. Give us some more resources. Okay. As you see my lab, I have many servers in my lab. Uh, they're all running trial copies of these uh, ESXi host trials. These are the Mac VMs I have. And 2016 from the previous labs I made, SQL servers and so forth. So what we want to do now is our file servers edit them and I'm not really running databases so uh, I'm just going to give them give them four I'm not really going to run any database I'm just going to install the software let's give them both four gigs of RAM and two processor two vCPUs okay so let's power them back on and what we're going to do now is we're going to double check the disks. Should have done that before I powered on, but that's fine. So, okay. So we have a local disk for 60, another disk for 20. Those are local disks. And so that should be good enough for doing what we need to do. You should have more space if it's going to be a production environment. So go full screen. You need to do first, actually. Show the ISO. There's the ISO. What we want to do is we want to install SQL. We want to right click on this server. Settings. And what we want to do is add the ISO. Uh, SQL server is there. Let's log in. Green. Confirm. Just because we shut down the cluster abruptly. I want to confirm we have our cluster up and running. We also want to confirm that this we have. So right now, like girls there and it looks like node one is the owner of the cluster at the moment which is good go here you should see an error because things happened like shut down abruptly so let's clear them go back to node node one and two are up storage it's owned by fs2 is there so let's Let's go here to node. I want to make sure everything is over. So we want to pause, drain roles. 
form disk is right here. Okay. And zoom, do not fail back. Disks are all on number. So this is going to do, we're going to go through an SQL setup, which is going to add more to the roles. So let's go here. Now, I also have a file I use for clustering. Let's see if I can bring it up here. Now I usually go through a document um, for my clustering setup. Let's see if I have the document available for us to show here. And make sure it's not one that Okay. I'll just make a edit to a document off screen here. Make sure this works for us. Make sure it's all done. Okay. All right, so I have a document here that uh, I usually use for setup. Um, so I usually go through what my installation is, so I have so I know what I did for each SQL setup. So what we're going to do is just go through this whole install. So what I'll do is I'll just minimize this document, take it off screen. I might put a copy of it up to so you could use it as your little tracking document. I, I'll make a clean document and put it up on the post as well uh, down below. So let's get on the server. First thing we want to do, we want to open up the SQL server. And I always run as administrator. Always a good idea because now you know you're the top level installing. You have the most rights. You're an administrator on the server. So first thing you get is your install center. Click on installation. And what we want to do is we want to look over new SQL server failover cluster installation. First thing you want to do is this. But what this is going to do now is set up a, a clustered version of your SQL. So we are running evaluation. Or we can put developer if we buy a developer license. So let's go evaluation. Next. Accept the key, accept the licensing. So it's just doing a check, right? Uh, we don't want to do Microsoft updates because we don't care at the moment. But in a uh, live environment, you definitely want to do that. So this is just a basic setup. We're not going to go in, in depth of anything. We're just going to set up SQL basic just to get it up and running as a basic SQL server. So what we what I usually do is because we have two drives, a local drive and a C drive. So what I want to do is on the FS drive, that's the drive we've used previous labs. What we want to do is we want to kind of follow a setup. So on the document I'm doing I want to do these folder names. And the reason why I do that is because when you install, it normally goes to the C drive and everything there. What we want to do is put this, the install on here. So I want to make a new folder. And those folders will be named SQL instance. Now, normally you would have just these folders there, but because this server is used for other things too, shared x64, their folder, SQL shared 
x86. It's a good idea to prepare all of this before you get going. So we'll get back to the setup at first. So you want to make sure you have these all set up ahead of time. What we want to do as well is we want to go to the SQL data drive. We want to make a folder called SQL data. This is just so you have your folder structure, right? Okay. And the logs. Now this is coming up because we abruptly shut down the server. So they'll go away for a second. Okay. Oh, and we want to go to SQL back and folder called SQL back. Okay. So again, those are coming up because we shut everything down. Both clusters were both sides of the clusters were down. So we have made our SQL data, our logs, back folder. And on our E drive, we've done the instance shared X4, shared X86. Okay, so now back to the install. So it says cluster verification warnings, right? Rule, okay, the cluster have been validated, but there are warnings. Yes, there is, because we had network the network of warnings. That's why we have that. So we're just going to carry forward and Windows Firewall. Well, if we're running SQL, what we want to do is your default SQL is which? Which port do you usually use? 1433, right? And 1434. So let's go to Control Panel, Firewall. Go to Advanced Rules. Let's go here, Inbound, New Rule. Let's make a port. And let's do 1433, TCP. TCP, in. SQL, right? And then we want to do UDP port 1434. These are basic default ports, UDP. Um, you're going to do different ports. I'll show you that afterward, the dynamic ports. So we want to say UDP in SQL. You can name it whatever you want, but this way you know the inbound rules are UDP and UDP. So those are your defaults. Normally, what you do is you change your port in SQL to be something completely different because if you've ever had an SQL server, you ever heard of SQL Slammer, it's an attack on SQL servers with the default ports. I just made the no-no of using the default ports, but this is just for a test environment. So we have the firewall ports open for our default install. So we can ignore that firewall rule. And everything else seems to pass. So let's click Next. Now we want to install some services. So let's make this a little bigger. Now all I want is the database engine. I'm going to give you the basics, right? We don't need a, an analyst or analysis server. Um, client tool connectivity, sure, why not? Um, client backward compatibility, sure, why not? And that's pretty much all we need. That's all I want. Um, as every other tool, it depending on the type of SQL server you want. This is just a basic server I want to install. So now this is where those folders come in handy. So right here, we want to change the root. Right, the E drive. And we want to go to SQL instance. So that's your root. And now feature directory, right? Now this is x64 by default, right? This program files. So what we want to do is put that to the x64 folder on our F drive. And because this is x86, we also want to change that to be our F86. So now we've got those three folders are going to accept this information. Click Next. And now it's going to go out. Check them. Okay. Now what are we going to call this, right? So what are we going to call the, we have the cluster name, right? What's our cluster name? Cluster name is called 2020 cluster. So why don't we call this 2020 SQL cluster? SQL cluster. Default instance. If you want to change the instance, you can. I'm going to leave that default. Now before we go ahead, after I click next, let it go ahead. But I'm going to click over to 
our domain controller. Remember our domain controller the last time we did. We pull up the ADOC tool, directory users computers, and we also pulled up DNS. The reason why this is important to bring up is because DNS is going to get a change. Remember the cluster and the cluster? Well, now SQL is going to also put a computer record in because when you call the SQL cluster, normally you would say server name slash cluster or you know, server name and cluster. Now what you're going to do is the cluster name slash database. So this way you can access the cluster from no matter where it is. You don't have to know it's FS1 or FS2 because that's our two servers we have it on, right? So you wouldn't have to go directly to that server to get on it because you don't know where the cluster is being held. So you'll see this happen. So let's go over from server one again and let's make this full screen. So it says available storage cannot be used, right? This is available storage qualified. Okay. Refresh. Okay. So did we have our cluster? Right? SQL server. Is it alive here? Are, is our disks available? Yes, they're all on FS1. We don't have a role yet. And our servers are up. So, available storage. Cluster group available storage is reserved by Windows failover clustering. It cannot use an SQL group. Say next. There you go. So we have cluster disk one, two, three, and four. So we want to use all three disks. The one it was complaining about is this one here, because this is your quorum. It wanted to use it, but it can't because that's dedicated to your quorum. That's what that error was, right? Cluster group, double storage, right? Because it found that disk, can't use it. So it says, hey, we can't use it. We want to use these three disks for this SQL cluster. So that's why I gave an error for there. It can't do it because that's the quorum disk. It's already to spoken for. We say next. And we want to say, let's give it an address. So check an address again. Ping. Now we did 32, right? Is 33 available? Let's use 33. Go here. IPv4. 192. 68.0.33 main cluster that's thing next sql server agent right browse we haven't set up an agent yet so what we should do is set up sql engine and agent accounts so let's do that so usually what i do From that document again, I usually create accounts, right? So whatever I'm going to call this thing. So we're just using a test cluster. So I'll say SQL engine, SQL agent. That out of here. Go back to our domain controller. We need to set up accounts to have this cluster work. So we should use domain account because they are shared. So let's go to users. And let's create a user. Call this SQL engine, right? SQL engine. Okay. Never expire because we don't want service to ever expire. We want to do an SQL agent now. Very simple computer names. Expire. Okay. So the two computer accounts are created now. Minimize it. Right. Leave that there. Let's go back here. 
now what we want to do is the domain name is compuguy.info we want to put in sql engine or agent password okay we want compuguy.info or your your domain names in this case this is my domain name okay password okay so we want to grant perform maintenance to that account next Oh, I might have top, typed a password. Oh, I did. I typed a username wrong. So it's good that we do this live. Okay. Next, going out to test the accounts, and it still has a problem. So SQL engine, SQL agent. Wonder if I typed a password wrong. Okay. Validation errors. Okay. SQL engine, SQL agent. Let's go back to the domain controller. Okay, compuguy.info. SQL agent. SQL engine. Now we could do compuguy. What we could do here is go back to the file server. Let's just take out the .info because we have the NetBIOS name. Wins or it's yeah, net bias name, the domain, help you guys. We could drop the info from, or you could say SQL, SQL engine at uh, help you gather info. Next, still having an error. So, SQL service account login password not valid. Okay, did I type them wrong? Let's go back here and double check. Click. Reset password. I'm going to do a very simple password. Unlock it while we're at it. Okay, right click on this one. I more than likely botched the password. Case. Okay. Passwords have been changed. Change here. Okay, double check. So this is where you have to make sure you have your account information all correct because if you can't get to it, problem. As you can see, it just did. So now you have Windows authentication mode and it's going to use the users you have. Now, if you prefer to have an SA account, you can say mixed and the SA account, make sure you remember it. Probably good to do that. And then add current user, which is me. And if you have other users, you can always add other users. So right now it's just me, but if you wanted to add a group, let's say you had a DBA group or something that you can add the group in there this way, whenever they log on, they have access into it. So for now, I'm just going to leave this. Click next, right? But before we click next, we have other tabs. So let's click data directories. And now see how it says root directory, right? G. well, what data directory are we talking about? This is our SQL data directory. So we want to go here to SQL data and we want to put it in there. So it automatically fills in that. Now temp, we didn't make a temp fall volume. We're just going to use, we could have made another disk called temp. That's usually what I do. Um, my documentation usually says data temp, right? So what we would do here is we could push temp to the temp directory. So for now, what we'll do is we'll go on the data drive and we'll create a temp folder. Right? This is all about preparing. You want to have your plan. So right? SQL temp. And we're getting that because the cluster. If I reboot it, it'll all go away. So SQL temp. So now what we want to do is add, go to the SQL data, SQL temp. 
and that's where it's going to go. Let's remove the, the default, and there you go. So our, our there, there is our data for temp, and now for our log directory, let's change this to the log drive. So now we have logs and temp, right? Because the temp and logs, they really could be the same drive if you wanted to, but I just did that because I have space. So don't go to max stop. There's nothing we can set there. Okay. Memory. Leave that alone. Now, generally what happens is SQL takes what it has. So if you give it four gigs of RAM, it's going to try to take all the four gigs of RAM. You could say recommend. You can say minimum server and maximum server, right? So right now it's just over two gigs. Right? So let's leave default, leave it alone. If you wanted to lock it down, let's say you have a 16 gig machine, you only want to use eight for the SQL, you could do eight gigs of RAM here. So let's leave it default. File stream, just confirm. And that's nothing. So we go next because we've done all the settings. And it's telling us it's going to install the basic bootstrap and everything in the default program folders. So, so now it's setting up SQL. Now, if we open up the cluster, you will see a role pop in here. You will also see another network ID because it has another IP address for the cluster. And you'll start seeing some items populate. So while we sit and watch that, We'll also see computers you will see the sql name pop up here and you will see the 2020 sql cluster pop up here let's go back to the file server and right now we're just doing it on one host this is the node one of the setup so it's installing our vc runtimes and everything it's all the prerequisites Is that so it usually takes about maybe five ten minutes to do this see the IP address still not responding because it still hasn't got there yet wait for this to happen now node 2 there's nothing happening to it right now. As we did the abrupt shutdown, getting all the different screens. This, this, and just to confirm the disks aren't here. Back to one. Still installing. Oh. And you'll see here and there's shared instance, right? There's nothing there yet. But as you go here, you see there's items being installed. So it's actually being installed right now. So most of the components are going to go between these three folders. Some of the default are going to go. So this is just some of the default installers, and then the rest is just the. So what we should do is go over to SQL, the other server, and create these the same folder instance shared x64 86. Here. Create. Folder names. instance SQL shared x64 folder 
SQL shared. It's 86. So now you have the three folders you need. Back to one. So node one is still installing. Need more information here. See if it started doing anything in the data folder. And yet, temp logs temp back. Let's go to data and just sit here and wait for it to come. There you go. So now data is being written to. Temp should be written to shortly. If this is online yet. Yep. So it's already been set up. Go back to our domain controller now. See if cluster. See 2020 cluster, right? See if SQL cluster is there now. There yet. What about here? 20 SQL cluster is there. DNS should be here as well. So it just did that. So now you know it's been set up and you know you had the permissions. Those are very important, these two things here. If these two things do not show up, that means you don't have the right permission in your domain. You need to go back and redo them. Back to host one. Host one says, all done and needs a reboot. Click OK. See all the folders have been loaded with data. Okay, so now this is done. We scroll through, check, 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 check. Everything good. Close. Now, before we reboot, let's go into the cluster. So notice how now we have a role because we set up an SQL server. So now this server, FS1, is now the owner of this database. Now I want to reboot number one. But what I want to do is I'm just going to reboot it. It's going to fail over. So let's reboot. So if this abruptly happened, it would fail over the cluster. Now SQL cluster is not going to go anywhere because there's only one host running it. Open up the cluster. And you will see this. And at the start. The next task we have to do. Right now, the cluster is probably going a little nuts because I did have SRM there. Okay, so we what we want here is there fail over cluster in the start taskbar. Let's pull up the cluster and see if it's fail over. I think we can see that from the disks. Forms failed over none of the disks. Probably because the other server is still trying to do it. So node, right? So what we should do is put this one, pause, drain roles, make it force. Because right now it's probably sitting there saying I can't do anything. Because, yep, because SQL can't go anywhere. So let's try and bring this up. That's the problem with once you have the cluster going, is if it's sitting on the main host. Out the recycle bin app. So we have all of this here because SQL is running from this machine. It can't run on the other one because it's not running yet. What we need to do now is now get the other disk up and running. So let's bring the cluster back. Make sure everything's here. Right, roll. Roll is on FS1. Nodes. Just uh, resume, fail back rolls, storage, and let's make this one come back. So let's go here, nodes, it's two, train rolls. 
I want to get that quorum drive over here. There we go. Okay, so let's put this back to resume. Do not fail back. I want to make sure it's up. Okay, so close on server number one. This one here should be number one. We have everything installed. So now what we want to do is go back to the setup install, PD. I right click, run as administrator. Let's minimize this. So what you're going to do now is now you want to set up the second side. So you want to go to installation and you want to go add node. First one we did this, the second one we're going to add node. Now I've, I've had issues with this before where I tried to run it and it wouldn't connect because of the accounts. So we don't want to update. Now check in our system. We don't need the installation files. It's just going to put the, the needed files over on the other server. Okay, same warnings, right? We're good. Next, evaluation. We agree. No instance. Now, there is no instance showing up, right? So we want to make sure we have an instance there we should be getting the default instance. So let's click next. See how it says, there is no failover cluster able to join. Okay, so let's go to the other node. Cancel this. And we want to install I want to make sure this node has the installer CD as well. So I'm going to go to settings, browse, install. Okay. And let's go here. Here. Second one is usually quicker to set up. Relation, add a node. Evaluation, accept, check. Don't want updates for now. Checking to see. Bringing over the install files now. That's why you're doing it on the second host. Let's go full screen for this. Pull up this disk. Okay. So we know we want to install here. That's why we we replicated what we did there. And then there will be a SQL server. It's installing the files here now. Okay. Back here. Let's wait for this message. All right, so it's running its check. This is where we should get the warnings that firewall and our second network adapter. Know that. Let's click next. And here you go. So it knows the cluster, it knows the, the name of this node. It knows the drives and it knows all the information. So let's go next. Right, that's the cluster. Should be the same IP, right? Want to grant perform here? It's going to want the password here. it knows the accounts but now it has to know those passwords and we're going to grant it right next so if everything works well with the authentication and it says credentials sql server service is invalid <laughs> that's funny
SQL Server agent. Next. And you have to make sure you type in the passwords right. <laughs> okay, so it's going through, it's going to tell us what we're doing, and it's going to install the bootstrapper in the same location. Install. This is why I go back to the idea that you should have a running document on how you install. So this way you could reference it for repairing or anytime you do different clusters. So like I said, I will upload this document in this video. Uh, I'll give you a link to it. You gotta have to actually put a link to it. So I will try to, to link to it. Uh, or if you've requested, I can always email it to you. Okay, all this goes through. Sorry about the quiet there. <laughs> I'm hoping my volume is actually better. Uh, I know during my 2016 settings, my volume, for some reason, when I uploaded my video to YouTube, the volume was knocked down a bit. So I have my volume up a little higher this time. So hopefully it's not too much noise. And hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> so this is installing now. See the shared. Next. Now what this is going to do is not going to install the other folders from the other server because it's clustered. Everything's already there. It's going to put the registry notes of where this stuff is. So it knows when the cluster fails over, it knows how to get to it. We will look at that in a minute. Now the other thing is, is when you do set up your SQL server, you notice that you need your SQL Studio installed. Now I'm not going to go through the video to install it because it takes forever. Uh, but pretty much when you install the SQL Studio tools, you can get in to see your database. So I will either try and add it in or I'll put a third video of this. Uh, and that's probably what I'll do. I'll do a third video of showing the SQL Server uh, Studio tools install. Uh, this way it, uh, it will be a complete video series. So I've updated the first video to be part one of three. This will be part uh, two of three, and the third one will be installing the SQL Studio Manager tool. This way I don't have like a three-hour video. It might do good for my watch times, but nobody wants to watch a three-hour video. Hopefully this one's not too painful, but fast forward ahead if you, if you find this is just crazy watching this, just fast forward ahead and do this. That's the whole idea of my videos. I'm trying to just give you how it's done without putting loud music in the back, no F words, no bad language. Just to help you get through these videos. I know there's lots of them out there, but I thought I'd continue my series. So as you see, the instance is loading. Four and X86. So let's load up the cluster here. You see here now, still running on number one. So it says we must reboot because everything is installed. So it's still running on number one. 
But once this closes, let's reboot. Click close. Let's reboot. It's finished. Wait till it completes. There you go. So that's done. Close everything down. Let's give this a reboot. Now, let's go back to number one. See that everything's on number one. Now, because we're done, bring the cluster up. Now we can actually move the roll. So once it comes back up, let's clear these alerts. So let's go to node. So node one is up, apparently. So it's back up. Okay, so what we want to do now is let's see if we could fail over SQL to the other node. So you see all the disks here. Select node. Right? There you go. Two is up. Click OK. Let's see if it goes. Disks are gone. This are pending. Note is up. The roll is pending still. And there you go. So everything flipped over. So it takes a couple seconds. And there you go. So everything's failed over. Now if we want the quorum, the quorum doesn't really matter where it is. Because uh, if the server goes down, it'll fail over. Um, but you can do other things. So that's pretty much it. That's a, a two node cluster running SQL, right? We can move it back, bring it back to number one, right? Pending, disks are all there, they come back. See, so once, once the server is running, you'll see it come up. So the next video, what we'll do is we will install SQL Studio, uh, just so that way you can connect to the database to see how it's running. And there you go. So that's it. That's how you set up SQL 2019 on a server 2019 server. And that's it. Two nodes, all done. Perfect running. And let's go back to our domain controller and to see all the information that we had talked about. So SQL cluster, SQL cluster, those DNS rules are there. Two accounts were created because now you can actually access the cluster database. So if you want to reference your database, your database name will be 2020 SQL cluster. That's the server name. So rather than FS1, FS2, because if you go FS1 and FS1 is not the cluster holder, your database won't work. So you just need to point your applications to 2020 SQL cluster slash database name. That's it. And if it's 1433, you could use that as well. That's the other thing. Before I shut down the video, let's go back. So when SQL is installed, right here, the configuration manager. If you already know how to use SQL, this is a review. Probably, you know, go away around, you don't, right? So what you want to do is go to network configuration, SQL, TCP IP. Now you go to IP address. Now see how 1433 is your default port? That's what it is right now. So now if you want to change that, you should go to dynamic port and put in like, let's say 14,000, right, to 142. But what this does now, when you say dynamic and you take away 1433, that means when you go to your database, you're not going to default. You're gonna to have to actually put a colon. So when you go to the server, you type colon or space, depending on how you're setting up with your software, if it's a website or something like that, to go to the proper port. So right now it's default there. I will take this off. Right now, default is 1433, but to secure your database to stop from SQL Slammer, SQL Slammer looks out for this default, because that's a default. If you put different ports in here, any ones you want to do, you use your own ports, but just make sure your application analysts know, or your applications know, to go to there with that specific port. Because by default, it will go to 1433, so you don't even have to type 1433. It's like when you type HTTP, uh, colon slash slash www.google.com it goes to port 80 default but if it was a port 8080 you would have to put colon 8080 in the end so that's just 
something to do with that. So I will show you that with the um, with the SQL Studio Manager as well. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, anything you want to see below. Uh, please let me know. And if you want a copy of this this little document I made, I will make a generic one for you. So you can build your own clusters and document yourself as well. This way you know where everything is. It makes life easier. So I will try and include it in the in the description. I'll probably put it up on like a shared Google Drive or something. And then uh, you can have it there. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next video.